r slash no sleep posted by you slash give mayor money 69420 i work a security job at walmart and i'll never walk in another again part two hello everyone it is great to see you again it's been a while since my last post and now i have some time to continue where i left off by the way if you hadn't seen the last post then click on the link above in order to get caught up besides that things haven't been looking so bad anymore I've gotten a new job as a truck delivery guy and the pay is stable, so all is going well. Though, I have been getting some strange messages from an unknown number, but I'm not sure if I should share them here or not. Alright, where were we? And uh, a little graphic warning. Once I got home, I immediately called Carson, still distraught from what happened back at the Walmart. I called him a couple of times but I was only met with his voicemail. But that's when I called him for one more time and he finally answered. Carson speaking. Who is it? Carson. I called you like four times, I shouted in slight annoyance. Yeah, I was busy. I swiftly composed myself, taking deep breaths in order to try and soothe my rapidly beating heart. I opened my mouth to ask him a question, but getting caught in my throat as I struggled to ask him or not. Eventually, I grit my teeth to ask him, finding the awkward silence more unbearable. Carson, what the hell is going on with that Walmart? Carson didn't say anything for a couple of seconds, seemingly trying to find the right words for it, but failing. I don't know either. The only thing I do know, is that we aren't supposed to know. Why aren't we supposed to know? Once again, he went into silence for a couple of minutes before finally speaking up. I can't tell you that. As far as I knew, I had no one else to trust but Carson. I knew nothing of the other employees. And I definitely didn't want to associate myself with that creepy smiling woman in the suit. So I just had to take Carson's word that he couldn't tell me for some odd reason. Look, I found this security tape. Why? But before I could finish my sentence, Carson interrupted me, sounding shocked. He also sounded somewhat distraught about the fact that I had found a security tape. You found a security tape? Yeah, it was labeled security training and then there was smiley, this yellow smiley face and then am my. He interrupted me once again, sounding slightly frustrated. No no. You weren't supposed to find that tape. It shouldn't have even been possible for you to find it. I couldn't understand. What could have happened associated with this tape that it was completely dropped years ago? Why? Why was isn't it used? I asked in quick breaths. I could hear Carson sigh on the other side of the phone before taking a deep breath to compose himself. Listen, that tape was lost all the way back in 2002. Less of lost and more of destroyed. I would know as I watched it happen. If it was destroyed, then why was it in the back rooms of the Walmart, completely preserved? All these questions just made it more confusing to me about the weird things happening at Walmart after 2 o'clock. If you truly did find that security tape, then I need you to do me a favor. I replied, why yeah, what is it? On tomorrow's shift, I need you to find the tape and bring it out with you when the sun rises again. Can you do that? I thought for a couple of minutes. I wanted to uncover the mystery of Walmart but I was also terrified by the idea of going back inside there. Going back inside that, nightmare of a supermarket. Nevertheless, I agreed to do his favor. Ah, uh, okay. Soon after I said that, he hung up. However, my curiosity and confusion hadn't been satiated. So of course, I would do some researching myself. Surfing through the web. I would find some details about Walmart that wasn't necessarily what I was looking for but was still something to note. Such as the fact that Smiley here was a mascot of Walmart until 2006, which is around the same time that Carson said the tape was supposedly destroyed at. Around that time, there were articles of people worldwide supposedly seeing Smiley in their dreams. There was even a whole website about it. But I could care less about that. After a while of searching, I did find something. In putting the address of the Walmart I worked at which was Madisonville KY, led me to an article. According to the article, the Walmart there was the first ever Walmart to be built in Kentucky. However, it was shut down due to a sinkhole from mining around the area. This article just proven to me that the company doesn't want me to know about these articles or the background behind the Walmart. Avoiding questions and wording things differently in order to keep some tight secret on something. Searching about the sinkhole or the mining brought me completely irrelevant results to no results at all. After realizing I wouldn't be able to get any more information searching online, I would have had to do it in person. And I already had an idea on what to do. Cameras. Now, I know that sometime after 2 o'clock, 
electronic devices either refuse to work or don't function properly. But it means I could catch some footage before that happens. Specifically, I thought of this idea to safely view what the hell was happening at the entrance once it hit 2 o'clock. So, I ordered all the cameras I needed and thank god for same day delivery or I wouldn't have video proof of the hell to come. And now all I had to do was wait. I was extremely tired thanks to last night's events, so I decided to take a quick nap. But that would have to come right after I feed Shanks. Shanks. I called for Shanks, holding a bag of dog food. Soon, Shanks came running after me, panting and wagging his tail excitedly. I poured food in his dog bowl, much to his enjoyment. Afterwards, I laid down in my bed, feeling my eyelids becoming heavy as I got comfortable. And then, I fell asleep. There was nothing but darkness for what felt like an eternity before I suddenly found myself in a crowd in Walmart. I looked around in confusion, my surroundings feel disconnected and blurry. It felt like I wasn't really there. I looked at my hands, noticing that they weren't actually my hands. I was wearing a costume. With this realization, it became hard for me to breath. My breath was becoming raspy and short. I clawed at the costume head, desperately trying to get it off with no avail. Soon, the people in the building noticed my frantic clawing at the head and soon realized I was panicking. Why can't I take the costume off? I remember thinking to myself. I fell to my knees, trying to pull my head off. As people surrounded me, I still clawed at my head, blood starting to squirm out the neck of the costume, filling it with the grotesque smell of rotting flesh and blood. I let out a horrible long screech as I grabbed my eye sockets, pulling it down with all my strength. I could feel the unbearable pain of my eyes popping out and my skin tearing off in the area I was pulling down my sockets. And then, I woke up. I sat up with a yelp, drenched in sweat. I breathed heavily, trying to compose myself. But I couldn't. I was really freaked out by that nightmare, whatever it was supposed to be. I soon calmed down however, seeing Shanks laying next to me sleeping peacefully. But every time I close my eyes, I can faintly see Smiley, just staring at me. I checked the time. It was 9 o'clock, so I still had some time to chill and relax. But I definitely wouldn't be going back to sleep after that nightmare I just had. Then I remembered the cameras I ordered earlier should have arrived at around 8.30 and I hurriedly got up to see if it had finally came. When I opened the door, there it was, a box sitting here on my front porch. I took the box inside and swiftly opened it, seeing the cameras inside laid about like they were just hurled in there. I didn't mind though, as long as they still worked. Soon. The time became 10 o'clock and it was time for me to leave. I grabbed all of my cameras and placed them in a backpack. Afterwards, I hopped on my scooter and began driving towards Walmart. I made it there a little bit earlier than usual, at 10.45. As I walked through the entrance, I was greeted by Carson, who grabbed my shoulder on the way out. Remember what you have to do. I nodded to him, continuing on into the Walmart. At 11 o'clock, I clocked in and was now wearing my security outfit, I couldn't forget the hat of course. With the time I still had, I began setting up cameras around the place and activating them, which weirdly enough my co-workers didn't care and ignored me while I was setting up all the cameras. After a couple of minutes, I had placed every camera I had and turned them on. Soon, the clock hit 12 o'clock and I swiftly locked the door. The first thing I did afterwards, was immediately look for a weapon. I definitely wasn't doing that bullshit again at least without a weapon. Now, I wasn't sure if Walmart had any swords or anything nor would I even able to use it efficiently. One thing I did know, is that they had baseball bats. Lo and behold, I was able to find myself a metal baseball bat. Holding it in my hands made me feel so much more confident, like I could take on anything. I decided to ignore the back rooms of the Walmart completely, as it wouldn't matter until the clock hit 2 o'clock. Waiting for the time to pass, I watched movies and occasionally played games on my phone. It felt even longer this time and seemed like it wouldn't even hit 1.30. But eventually, after god knows how long, it was finally 2 o'clock. Like last time, I started hearing random loud whirring and humming noises from the entrance, accompanied by bright flashing lights of random colors. Again, my phone refused to work until the rainbow epileptic attack at the entrance abruptly stopped. It was time again. I knew what I had to do, avoid any strange figures and make it into the back to find the tape. But when I tried my usual route to the back, the aisles kept on going. I didn't notice it until the walk turned from minutes into nearly an hour. It was then I noticed something was up. I turned on my heels, glancing back. The entrance seemed to fade into the distance, obscured by the seemingly endless aisles that appeared to stretch for what felt like a mile. My body wanted to run, my legs shaking underneath my weight. But I couldn't run now, 
Not when I had a job to do. I really regretted not buying a flashlight so I could somewhat see. Nevertheless, I had to continue on. I traversed through the near pitch black aisles that didn't seem to end, the sound of my footsteps echoing throughout the empty expanse of Walmart. After a couple minutes of walking with no results, I suddenly encountered one of those strange figures. It was too dark to try and describe their features. It just, stood there. The sounds of occasional items being shoved around in the aisles near me added more to my unease. I remember Carson saying not to approach them, and even though nothing happened last time when I did, it felt like something terrible would happen if I approached the figure. But before I could do anything, the figure suddenly turned to me in an instant, its white glowing eyes piercing through the darkness. It said one thing, its voice distorted and narrowly monotone. Hello? I froze, my fight or flight instincts not working. With a loud slap of feet, the dark figure suddenly appeared in front of me, staring me down. Its glowing bright eyes felt like I was looking into a white void. It repeated itself again, tilting its head to the side. My body finally decided to move as I gripped my baseball bat and attempted to hit the figure in its side. However, it didn't budge. Now sure, I wasn't exactly fit by definition, but I wasn't weak. So the fact that this thing just shrugged off the blow filled me with pure terror. I could feel the adrenaline course through my veins as my muscles tensed, ready for action. Without warning, the lights suddenly turned on, but they weren't the same as before. The fluorescent lights were now bright red. If the earlier shit had me contemplating running, then this one certainly put me into action. I hopped over one of the shelves, climbing over it frantically in mere moments. I sprinted down the aisles as they became narrower the more I ran for my life. From behind me, I could hear a creature run on all four of its legs, knocking over and charging through aisles in an attempt to catch me. I continued running, faster than I had ever before. The shelves starting to close in on me as there seemed to be no end to these aisles. I could hear the loud thumping of the creature behind me get progressively louder. From the other side of the shelves, I could hear people laughing hysterically as the monster screeched a horrible symphony. My hope was restored as I see a men's bathroom sign in the far distance, like a shining ray in contrast to the dark and eerie red lights illuminating the entire building. With one final burst of energy, I dashed towards the bathroom and dived head first making it inside as I could hear the monster crash against the wall and screech in pain. I stood up, my entire body aching in pain. The bathroom smelled absolutely fucking terrible. Accompanied with shit left in the toilet and penis drawings on the wall. Which is the most normal thing I've seen so far. I looked at myself in the mirror, taking the time to notice how much of a mess I was. But then, that's when I noticed that the mirror wasn't copying my exact movements, sending a chill down my spine. I stared at me, and I stared back. I leaned in and slowly brought my finger against the glass mirror, trying to see what happened against my instincts. Then without warning, it or the other version of me grabbed me through the mirror before suddenly dragging me inside. I grunted as my back smacked hard against the bathroom wall, tears beginning to well up in my eyes. I caressed my back, trying to soothe the pain. Yep, I deserve that, I said in a hushed whisper. The other version of me was now gone, leaving me on the other side of this, mirror realm. It wasn't till then that I noticed that I hadn't hit the floor yet. I was just floating against the bathroom wall in zero gravity. My body didn't like that either, as I could feel something churning up in my stomach. However, there was no point in whining about it, so I dealt with the pain. I pushed myself off of the wall, propelling towards the bathroom door. With little effort, I pushed the door open and found myself in this, black void. Something caught my eye though. A glowing videotape hovering above a concrete pedestal. I thought to myself that had to be it and I began floating over to the tape, reaching out for it. However, just before I could feel Go could grab the tape, a force suddenly pushed me back, causing me to slam against the wall. I landed on a floating piece of rubble, trying to catch my breath. I could hear faint laughter, almost as if this place was playing with me. The gravity had changed now, becoming low gravity. The tape was now way farther back, a trail of floating rubble leading up to it. Through the pain, I stood up starting to make my way towards the tape. My legs shook with every step I take, the sounds of my feet stepping on rubble echoing throughout the pitch black void. But once again, before I could reach it, I could suddenly feel my body stretch backward as I was suddenly hurled backwards into the void. I screamed as I flopped through the air, falling in nothingness for a couple of seconds before smacking against cold dirt without warning. My surroundings were different again, like the place was always changing. I had now found myself with what seemed to be an abandoned underground mine. The only thing that seemed to be holding up the place was shabby wooden supports. I stood up, 
making sure not to stand up too fast to not hurt myself anymore. I looked around, just noticing that my metal baseball bat was missing. Veil, there goes my only form of protection in this place. Nevertheless, I had to continue on. I walked through the dark and dimly lit hallways of the mine, the only light in this place being small lantern hanging on the wooden supports. The place seemed like a maze, it felt like I was walking in circles. After a couple minutes of walking, I turned and came across a skeleton sitting against the wall, giving quite a fright. There was a writing in blood on the wall, which simply said, it burns. But it didn't feel like the person who died had written that. Instead, it felt like this place was mocking him, writing down what he screamed as he supposedly burned to death from something unknown. Seriously freaked out, I kept on walking. Just then, I could hear the rattling of bones, causing me to turn around swiftly in response. My heart felt like it was in my throat as I opened my mouth to scream but nothing came. The skeleton was now facing towards me, directly looking up at me. I hurriedly turned around, running for my life. The sounds of my footsteps echoing throughout the abandoned mine. I stopped when I eventually ran out of breath, and now I had absolutely no clue where I was, if I didn't know beforehand. I had no other choice but to keep on walking, surely better than just standing around. After walking for a couple of more minutes, I came upon this metal door, just embedded inside the wall. On the side of the door, was a keypad. With seemingly no other way of progressing, I tried my luck on the keypad. And I got it first try because the code was 1234. The door made a clicking sound, signifying that it was now unlocked. I opened the door and walked through, shivering as I was blasted by the intense cold of this facility. Yeah, apparently, there was just a whole facility sitting underneath the Walmart. No idea of what the purpose of it would be for, but I continued inside nonetheless. This place was even colder than Walmart, that I was sure I would get frostbite if I stayed down here for too long. The constant humming of the lights above didn't help either, with a small amount of heat they were producing in that maddening sound. On a desk, I found a shredded note card which I could barely read. But I was able to understand two words. The moon. What could the moon have to do with this? Still, I decided to keep it, stuffing it in my pocket as I found it interesting. As I continued exploring the facility, I found many strange things. Such as a room filled with nothing but beds, a chair trapped in a cube of pillows, and a giant drawing of the moon with little light rays radiating out of it. What any of it meant, I had no clue. Then, in one of the rooms, there sat down on a table, a videotape. I quickly lunged for it wasting no time to grab it before some weird shit happened that causes it to get away from me again. I looked at the label, and for sure this was the videotape. And now all I had to do, was leave. As I left the room, I couldn't help but get the terrible feeling that I was being watched. As I made my way towards the door I came through, large amounts of some black goo suddenly fell from the ceiling, blocking the doorway. I tripped back in a fright, nearly falling, but I was able to save myself. Even from where I was standing, I was able to feel the sheer intensity of the heat exuding off of it, warming my body in seconds. What the hell? I yelped, trying to figure out what the hell that black goop was. But I didn't have any time to think as without warning, the black goop grew in size and stretched towards me at an insane speed. I was just barely able to duck as the goop grazed past my head, nearly taking it off. I ran through the door at full speed, the walls now adorned with skeletons hanging on metal hooks. They all turned to look at me as I sprinted forward down the hallway. By some miracle, I was able to find the hole I fell through looking at the void. However, the black goop soon followed after me, engulfing the walls of the mine. The ground it consumed as it charged towards me became a lake of intense heat. That would also cause the mine to shake, as the searing black goop would end up burning the wooden supports holding it up. Either way, if I wouldn't be able to get out, I would either be crushed or burnt to death. I began desperately climbing the wall, scratching myself and accidentally stabbing myself sometimes with how frantically I was climbing. But I slipped up on one of the rocks and fall back down to the ground, landing on my ankle wrong and spraining it. I shouted in pain, holding my ankle while holding tears back. I looked back, seeing that the goop was now only be a couple seconds away from touching me. I reached my hand out into the air, hopelessly wishing that through all odds, someone would grab me and pull me out of here. Even though I knew that was impossible. But just then, I could see a metal baseball bat peering through the darkness, coming just close enough to where I could grab it. Then, something pulled me up, saving me just before the black goop touched me. They pulled with a little more strength this time, and I landed in the back rooms of the Walmart on my butt. I breathed heavily, my ankle throbbing in pain. Wow. That was close, yeah?
A voice rang out. At first, I thought it was Carson. But as I turned towards them to thank them, it wasn't Carson. Instead, it was a woman I've never seen before, but she somehow felt familiar. I just stared at her, trying to comprehend what has happened. But I must have stared for too long as she spoke up. Hey, are you okay? I snapped out of it, realizing that it was awkward. Why yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. No problem. I sat up against the wall, grunting in pain as my ankle scraped against the ground. She crouched down to take a look at my ankle, noticing I was in some pain. You hurt yourself up pretty bad, didn't you? I just fell and sprained my ankle, I it's no biggie really. I looked away, trying to shrug off the pain. I sat in awkward silence for a couple of seconds before speaking up. What's your name? She turned towards me, a bit surprised at the question. She opened her mouth, but said nothing, as if she was trying to think something up. I'm, Melissa. My name is Melissa. The way she dragged out that pause made me almost certain that she made the name up, but it would have to wait for now as I had an another and more important question to ask. Melissa, how did you even get in here? She said nothing. I didn't believe she was a liar though, I just think that she might be confused on where she was. With my current knowledge, I just had to chalk it up that she was somehow in the building once I locked the doors at 12 o'clock. She stood up, taking a few steps towards the door. Look, I'm going to go get something for that sprained ankles of yours. W wait. I reached out for her. I wanted to tell her not to leave me, but then I realized how pathetic that sounded and put my arm down. And never mind. And with that, she left, leaving me alone in the back rooms of Walmart. After a couple of minutes of just sitting there, Melissa eventually came back, holding something large in her arms. Well, I couldn't find anything for your ankle, but I did find something else instead. Now, I could see what she was holding more clearly. It was a husky, identical to the husky I saw on my last shift. The husky barked and walked up to me, panting and wagging his tail excitedly. It's you again. I pet the husky profusely, my mood once again rising in his presence. Thanks. I turned towards Melissa, letting a faint smile slip my lips. She chuckled and looked proud of herself for what she had done. Hey, no biggie right? She would then suddenly look around, her face having the faintest of worry. This place makes me uneasy, W we should get out of here. I nodded, slowly standing up so I didn't my hurt my ankle even more. She helped me walk out of the back rooms, the husky following right behind us as we made our way towards the entrance. Now. I know we weren't supposed to leave until the sun rise, but at this point I was too curious to leave it alone. I needed to know what would happen if we tried to leave too early. Once we made it to the door, Melissa tried to open the doors, but they didn't budge. The doors won't open, she sighed. Hold on, I have to lock the doors at 12 o'clock, let me try. I walked in front. I pulled out the keys to the front doors and swiftly unlocked them. Afterwards, I tried to pull at the doors and again, they didn't budge. No matter what I did, I push, I shove, it didn't budge. It was anticlimactic but at least I know what happens if you try to leave early. I guess we're stuck in here until the clock hits 7.30, whenever that happens. I checked my phone, in which the time was 1990 which still didn't make sense. It was unfortunate because it meant that I didn't really have any means of telling the time. I'm sure a clock or a watch would have the same effect. I patted my pockets, making sure that I still had the tape secured. It's 4 a.m. So that leaves us just three more hours, she said, causing me to turn towards her in surprise and confusion. How did she know what the time was? Either she was telling the truth or she was lying, but she wouldn't have a reason to lie. At least not now. How do you know what the time is? I decided to ask. She froze, presumably startled by my question. She turned towards me, shrugging with uncertainty and speaking with awkward dragged out pauses. Lucky guess? I was still suspicious of her. But I would have to let it go for now. Standing near the entrance in this nightmare of a Walmart was basically a death sentence, where any other weird creature hiding in the darkness could jump out at any moment. Then, my body was suddenly shocked with intense pain from all over my body. I didn't pay attention to it now, but dropping for how high into an abandoned mine on my back must have obviously done some serious damage, and now the adrenaline was just running out. I grunted in pain, falling backwards onto the ground. H hey! J Jesus! You're more beat up than I thought, Melissa shouted in concern, crouching down beside me. The husky also ran to my side in response to my fall, whimpering in worry. Melissa helped me up, beginning to guide me somewhere. She placed me on a bed, covering me with a blanket, 
Here, lay here for now and, I'll go get you something to eat. She soon walked off, once again leaving me, this time with a husky who I will now refer to as Chopper. I pulled out my phone, of course, the time was still wrong but I wanted to test something. Would certain apps work after 2 o'clock? The first app I tried was YouTube, but it only led to me a screen of a static. It doesn't make sense, but you know it makes sense. The next thing I tried was my camera, which surprisingly worked, though not very well. And of course, using any type of browser didn't work. Even browsers like Brave or Opera GX. I don't have any clue as to why some apps works while others don't, but it did bring me a sense of ease, even though small, that there was a chance of contacting someone in this death trap. After a while, Melissa finally came back, holding a bowl of what looked like to be ramen noodles. She placed it down in front of me, providing me with a fork. Here you go. I'm not really that great at cooking, um, anything. But the instructions were simple enough for me to follow, she chuckled awkwardly. Well, thank you anyways. But as I lift my arm, I was suddenly struck by that same pain again, causing me to grunt and freeze in place. Geez, you really aren't fit to do anything by yourself, she sighed, picking up the fork from my grasp. Let me help. And no thanks. I quickly refused. My body was already in pain, I didn't want my self-esteem to be too. However, despite my refusal, she pressed on. Don't be such a big baby. She snorted. Besides, it's okay to ask for help. I didn't say anything back, either out of embarrassment or I couldn't find anything to say. Or maybe it was just both. She brought the fork to my mouth, making sure that the noodles didn't drop onto the blanket. Say ah. Reluctantly, I opened my mouth letting her spoon feed me. The taste was, in realty, it was absolutely terrible. But the warm scene kept me in denial. This place had gotten so much brighter with the addition of Chopper and Melissa. And time would fly by without any of us noticing. The time was now. 7 o'clock. Me and Melissa were now starting to make our way towards the door, when Chopper suddenly began pulling at Melissa. Huh? What's wrong? I asked Chopper. I think he wants me to stay for some reason. Melissa smiled, patting Chopper on the head. She reassured him that it will be okay and we would come back for him. Chopper just whimpered and sat there, watching us go through the entrance. For some odd reason, he didn't want to come with us, as much as I would have enjoyed his company. I thought, maybe this place was his home. Anyways, we walked outside, the warmth of the sun beaming onto my skin. I turned over to Melissa, who was smiling back at me. But then, her smile faded as she crossed her arms. Wow! It's so cold. She shivered. In response, I took off my jacket and wrapped it around her, hoping that it would give her some warmth. A desperate hope nonetheless. She didn't look to get any better, and I knew something terrible was going to happen. She turned towards me, shaking heavily. James, do you mind? I shook my head. Quickly after, she hugged me, placing her head near my heart. She let out a sigh of satisfaction, faintly smiling. You're so warm. And just like that, she turned into dust, the breeze picking her up and scattering her across everywhere. I tried to hold back my tears but I couldn't, falling on my knees and sobbing. She was gone. Melissa was gone. And I didn't want to admit earlier, but I was gaining feelings for her. But I guess all dreams don't last forever. I'm so pathetic. Aren't I?